Welcome back to Florida Foodie. I'm your host, Candace Campos, along with our producer, Thomas Mates. Hello. And running a food truck can be a tough job under the best of conditions, right? But throw in a global pandemic, and it can be certainly a grueling task. Despite it all, though, today's guest is thriving, and his business is moving into a brick and mortar location, which is so huge for them. We are joined today by Kwame Boache. He's the chef and the owner of Chicken Fire. I like it. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. So, Kwame, just kind of give us a rundown of, first, let's just talk about your food truck. We walk up to the food truck. What, what, what am I smelling? What am I feeling? What am I ordering? Yeah, so we, what we serve is what we call soulful hot chicken, and that's a rendition of Nashville style hot chicken. And the reason we don't call it Nashville style is one, because I'm not from Nashville and we never try to front about that. Uh, but two is what soulful means for us as a culture, as a team, as a company overall. Soulful for how we define it is where passion meets purpose. So passion is everything that we love to put into our food, our service, our hospitality experience. And our purpose is to, you know, be people's favorite place to come eat fried chicken and raise the standard for hospitality. So when you come into Chicken Fire and you come anywhere near our trailer and we're going, uh, you're going to get hit with the best smell of fried chicken that you've ever had. It's going to smack you right in the mouth and make your mouth water. And you're, you know, if you weren't coming to the truck, I bet you are now. My mouth is already watering. <laughs> so what is it about the hot, the hot chicken that is such, such a craze? Because, I mean, you guys are going from, how long have you been in the food truck world? Yeah, so we've been in the food trailer, uh, food truck, food trailer for a year, a little bit over a year and a month now. So we started in October of 2019 with a smaller trailer as a pop up. And, you know, that was a crazy endeavor. And then we grew, fortunately, to a larger trailer uh, and we we're able to establish a residency at a couple of different places in town. And we we're able to operate. We operated our food truck and slash trailer more of like a restaurant. And, you know, part of the hot chicken craze, you know, for, for us personally, uh, chicken, you know, is, is my background. I was raised up north in Akron, Ohio, but my family's very southern. My grandmother, all her family are from Camden, Alabama. She moved up there to provide better for her six kids. So I grew up with southern style food, southern style background, southern hospitality is embodied in me. And that's embodied in our team. So when we did Chicken Fire, we wanted to do something that was true to, you know, me and my culture, um, but also something that would connect with people. And the hot chicken side of it is what connects with people in a modern day age. You know, fried chicken is great, and every great hot chicken has a great base southern fried chicken. Then you apply that spicy hot oil glaze, and it's the mixture of the cayenne pepper, the brown sugar, the myriad of other spices. When you do it the right way, it's this amazing mixture of sweet, heat, saltiness, savoriness, even some umami in there. And it just touches on all the right notes on the palate. And actually, the heat part of it that people don't know about, the science is that wakes your palate up and opens those pores on your tongue, so you're getting more flavor in than you ever would before so you're tasting a whole new experience with this and so for a lot of people it's just mind-blowing and it's something that's really craveable and you just come back to because that heat you know that pulls you in but then that flavor keeps drawing you back so like when you're talking about like the heat level do you do you do like the like you start people is it like you know just one size fits all or do you have like levels you have like Baby a, a dare, <laughs> yeah, a so dare that- level chicken <laughs> So if you ask me personally, you know, we have a variety of heat levels. Me personally, you know, I'm not in it. I love it for the flavor and the mixture of flavors, but there's a lot of other people that are, you know, care more about the heat. For me, if it's, if it doesn't taste good overall, I could care less for the heat. I love heat to make things taste better. So we start at soulful, which is our, you know, we call it perfectly seasoned, but no heat. That's more of like our plain Jane style of chicken. If you were to get, you know, what, what you would what you would know is a normal Southern buttermilk fried chicken. Um, that's our soulful. That's really good. If you don't like heat, that's what's for you. Then we take it a notch up with our meat, which is a new heat level that we added because our mild, which is the next one, ended up being too much for people. But our meat, you know, that's like a touch of heat. We say meat is like maybe like a medium somewhere else, like maybe a medium buffalo wing or something. Okay. So that's where if, you, if, you, if you're not really a heat person, but you want to get a little bit of that heat glaze flavor and that dry rub that comes on there, you want meat. Mild. Right. <laughs> it's okay. A lot of people are. There's nothing to be ashamed of for meat. You just get that touch of heat. Mild is where it gets kicked up a lot. Mild for, for, you know, hot chicken, for natural style hot chicken, our mild is light heat, but our mild compared to like, you know, a buffalo wing, our mild is hot. Like, you know, we don't, we don't even front about that anymore. Our mild is hot. It is spicy. Um, slightly spicier than probably the, you know, hotter hot buffalo wings out there. Then that goes up almost double with our medium. Our medium is akin to like a Thai hot. So our medium is very spicy, very hot. It's my favorite personally because I feel it gives you the best balance of the flavor and the fire. And I feel like it comes together so well past the medium for our last on the menu heat is hot. 
and our hot's just, you know, we call it straight fire. It's just extremely hot. It's way hotter than the medium. I mean, you're, you're still getting flavor in there. That's if your tongue can stay in the game, but uh, it, you know, you're probably going to want a little milk with that or, or a couple of beers. So, <laughs> and then things that we don't normally speak of, but we do have a few off the menu heat levels that go to hot X, um, hot X squared, and, you know, even a little known hot infinity that, you know, we're going to plan to use for challenges in our new store. But those heat levels, that's, that's for the true heat seekers out there. That's for if you want to challenge yourself. I mean, I've seen grown men and women burst into tears on the spot. <laughs> it's called a hot damn, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are off the menu for a reason. We don't like doing that to people, but you know, if that's what you want, we will oblige. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> and you're and you're talking about your restaurant. I mean, you're you're going okay, um you're we're in a pandemic here where most people are kind of like, you know, clamming up a little bit, not taking any crazy chances here, and you guys are yeah. opening up a restaurant and you guys are working on a soft opening and this is the, kind of the beginning yeah. of, G of December. You guys are working on a soft opening and it's already crazy. So kind of tell us what you're, what you're yeah. hoping to see in the restaurant. Well, well, let me tell you guys this with, you know, with this whole crazy COVID pandemic, when it started, we, we had no idea what was going on or what was going to happen. And especially, you know, from a restaurant standpoint, when this was first going on, it was, hey, everything's going to shut down. We're probably even going to shut down all restaurants. You're probably not going to have anything to do, you know, and for, for me, that means unemployment. Um, if they shut down the restaurant. So as they're talking about shutting things down, even in the way that things were shut down, you know, I, to me, it was in something that we've become very proud of for ourselves. We said, you know, we have a team, we have people who, you know, decided to work with us that, you know, allowed us to take us, take them into our charge and that, you know, they trusted us to be there for them and to provide for them. I said, if we're going to go out, we'll go out giving away rather than wasting away. So, you know, where a lot of other people pulled back, I said, this is a time we need to push forward and push in and dig into our community, show them that we care and that we're still here. And if we make it outside of it, you know, hopefully, you know, we get some of that love, we continue to get that love back. But either way, at least if what people last remembered of Chicken Fire, I wanted it to be great things. So we decided to give free meals to kids when the schools shut down, you know, which was out of the blue and out of crazy. And a lot of people were out of work and then they had to provide more meals. So we said, we'll feed every kid that we can for free. And then we gave our um, employee discount, you know, 50% off to uh, members of the hospitality industry, everything from Disney workers to airline workers, hotel workers, restaurant workers, servers, whoever. We said, if you need it, just come and get it. And we'll provide as much as we can for as long as we can. Fortunately, we were, you know, one of the few places that were staying open throughout the entire pandemic. Uh, we never closed for any reasons associated with the pandemic. We were able to keep all of our staff uh, fully employed, uh, even everyone full time or part time. We kept everyone on board and we just trudged along through. And then, you know, fortunately for us on the other side of that, you know, was this resurgence. And as we evolved and we came, became more of a takeout business from the trailer and, you know, we were already built for that. And it just kind of grew and grew from there. And we've only grown through the pandemic where, you know, we're blessed and fortunate to do that to where for a long time for us to spend time to graduate into the restaurant world because we've just exceeded the capacity of what we can provide for people from the trailer. Mm -hmm. Were there like lean times, like say, like maybe around like that first shutdown, maybe towards like April, <laughs> May, where it was probably like looking a little grim for you? Yeah, I mean... It was scary. I mean, we saw definitely when that first, you know, we were doing really well, you know, January, February, March, and we were just seeing growth, growth, growth. And then, you know, that when that hit at the beginning of March, there was, you know, that slight dip from what we expected. And then April was down, but, you know, we kept going. And like I said, we kept going, we kept opening up every day. We were open seven days a week at, during that time. And I said, we're going to keep showing up every day. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep trying to evolve and doing whatever we need to do to keep the doors open. And on the other side of it, you know, I feel like, you know, after despair comes prosperity. And I felt on the other side of it, if we persisted, there would be a lot of rewards. So yeah, it was scary at times. Yeah, we didn't know what was gonna happen or what the next day would look like, but we knew if we kept to it, if we kept providing, if we kept doing what we felt was right and showing people our values and showing the community that we, we want to be here and that we're committed to being here no matter what, that, you know, we might get some of that reward on the other side. Yeah, and you're doing all this just like you said you started in like October 2019. So you're only like what? Yeah. Five months into yeah, it, you're a toddler. <laughs> it, like, it was it was a good at first we were like, it was a good run, guys. We <laughs> I mean, and 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 that's the thing that when you put you guys, when you guys put yourself out there and helping the community, that community remembers you when things are good. You know what I mean? Good, bad, or indifferent. I mean, that's I mean, you guys are really, truly kind of paying well, it forward. Really. I'll even say the biggest thing is that the, the craziest thing has been like chicken fire is bigger than me now. It's bigger than any one person on our team, even our whole team. Like this is a community business. This is Orlando's business. Chicken fire, like when we got this restaurant, the celebration that happened when people found out, 
it was like it wasn't just our win it was the community's win it was everybody's win like this is for all of us like we made it we graduated to this point like we got to, like this is our light in this crazy year this is our light that we can all be grateful for and that we can all look forward to and we all can all you know expect to have an amazing time here and you've got a lot of passion behind everything you say what's your background i mean did you start in the in the in the kitchen what how, how do you get to where you're at now yeah, I've got a mixed background. You know, my, my love of food, you know, it, it stemmed from, like I said, I grew up a lot with my grandmother. You know, my mom worked two and three jobs my entire life. So I spent a lot of time with my grandmother growing up who would help take care of me and my brothers and, you know, help watch us in the evenings and weekends sometimes. So, you know, she, like I said, she never let go of any of her Southern roots. So I, I you know, absorbed all of that, that passion for cooking, being able to get that foundation for culinary in terms of, you know, learning to cook with your with your palate, with your senses, not just going off of recipes and you know technical skills and things like that. What what tastes good? What looks good? What sounds good? What smells good? What's going to attract people? And then learning that that southern hospitality from her in terms of when someone comes into your environment, you want to make them feel a certain way. You want to leave an impact on them. You want them to remember how you made them feel um, and, and really make a mark on them. And as, as I evolved, you know, I also got an interest in business. And I went through business school. And, also have two master's degrees, an MBA and a master's in science and management. And restaurant world is the perfect marriage of my love for business and entrepreneurship, as well as my deep passion for cooking, culinary, and wanting to bring that all together. So, you know, as I worked in different places and food and, you know, Chicken Fire always says off the back of many failures for me, I was in, you know, a failed, a failed business partnership you know, a couple of years ago that which put, you know, my, me and my family in a bad situation. And then, you know, graduated from that, I had to work a couple uh, jobs that I wasn't passionate about at all, but my wife was always there to say, hey, you know, you need to be pushed for it. You know, you need to get back into what it is that you love doing, what it is that, you know, makes you you and makes you happy. And then this time do it your own way. So that's why when we created Chicken Fire and came up with the whole concept for Soulful Hot Chicken, not that to say that we know everything or we know better than anyone else, but we know how we want to treat people. We know the type of experience that we want to embody. We know what we want people to feel when they come through our, our spot, whether that was in the trailer, whether it's now in the restaurant, we know how we wanna make people feel. We want them to feel welcome, we want them to feel like family, we want them to feel like we're all having a good experience together. We wanna to recognize each person as that human they are, where we feel like, you know, in my observations from places I worked in, a lot of other people are going left where it's focused on, you know, transactions, throughput, technology, so how much money you can make, how fast you can make it, and how little interaction you have to have with people in order to do that. I wanted to go right and take a step back and say, I want to care about Candace or Thomas, and I want to have that interaction with you. So before the pandemic, you know, part of the premise was chicken fire is that I stood outside of the trailer every day from, you know, morning to night. I shook the hand of every person that came through, you know, which even evolved before COVID, you know, to give them <laughs> hugs and things like that, you know, to really develop and established relationships that last even now and even though now we can't you know handshake and hug and all that it's still we make we do everything that we can to make that experience for each person unique and to let you feel our energy to let you feel our vibe to let you know that like this is our life like we care about this everything that we're doing we're super passionate about it and if any of that is able to be communicated to anyone else then that's a win for us like that's what we're all about to create that lively experience and and, and nothing's wrong with the other stuff transactions throughput technology are important we incorporate some of those things in our business as well, but the human element, the human interaction is the thing that I've found the most success in in, in life and in my in, in careers. And that's what I wanna be known for. That's what I want us to build with Chicken Fire, something unique where obviously the food has to be good and great, but that service, that hospitality experience is something that, in, that just brings it all together. And you're like, that's a place that that's my favorite place to go to, a place I wanna to go to time and time again and tell other people about and bring other people here. Wow. And you know, it's, I, I work in restaurants like through college and stuff like that. You don't hear a lot of like, oh, I have multiple masters or an MBA and things like that. Usually it's, you know, like, oh, you know, I'm, <laughs> a lot of people on the fringes will say, so like, you know, do you, find, <laughs> do you find you kind of stand out amongst your peers? I mean, it sounds like you've had a good, you know, kind of like building community with the other restaurants, uh, you know, working as a pop-up and stuff like that. Yeah, I was fortunate growing up you know, to it, fortunate in the side that I was good at school. You know, I grew up very poor. Uh, we didn't have a lot. We grew up in bad neighborhoods and things like that. And it, we didn't have a lot that other people had. But what it was always instilled in me, you know, by my family is that, you know, there's always a pathway for you. If you're willing to work for it, if you're willing to grow for it, if you're willing to do the right things for it, there's a pathway for you. And you just have to put your mind to it and do it. Don't let, you know, your, you know, I was always, we were always able to see, you know, don't let our current, circumstances which is now my background don't let that dictate what your future is going to be 
And for, you know, I was able to make a pathway for myself through education. I was able to find that if I put applied myself to this, I could do different things. So I don't, I don't think it makes me better or worse than anyone else, but I know that was a pathway that I was able to take. And it provides me with a skill set and a knowledge that, you know, when I talk to peers in the restaurant industry that are, you know, vastly more experienced than I am and, and or less experienced, I'm able to connect with people of all kinds on different levels, which I think helps me build um, different relationships that, you know, has helped propel us to higher levels because it's all about, you know, your network and everything. And I feel like we've been able to really connect with good people who have um, helped guide us in the right paths and who have helped just support us to where we are now. And where you guys are now is at a new location. So give us an idea where you're at in Orlando. Why did you pick this spot? Yeah, we are super excited. This spot is like a dream come true. So we're now located at you know, 2425, 2425 East Colonial Drive, okay. Orlando, Florida, 32803. So it is right next to the iFresh Market on the corner of East Colonial and Bumby, uh, right across from the Chick-fil-A. Uh, on uh, in Colonial Plaza, that uh, we don't talk have a, about the other chickens around. <laughs> they know people. Now. People know more about them when they when they're passing the street. Look left and not right. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, we're excited to go head to head. Um, the, the, this space was a dream come true. I, had, you know, no lie. For the better part of a year, every day would drive, you know, to work and, you know, would see this, would see this spot and I said, oh my gosh, that would be a great spot for a restaurant. That would be a great spot for a restaurant. Like I would, you know, not that, you know, I, I need to have that spot, but if, if that, like, that would be a dream come true. It's on the front street. It's everywhere we've been with the trailer. It's right, you know, because we've only been in this central Orlando area operating permanently uh, with, with the trailer. And I said, you know, that's the perfect combination. It, it doesn't get more central than that. And, you know, when the opportunity came available, and I remember the day, that you know, I heard the opportunity came available is you know, hey, this is available right now, and we can we can go to see it, and you know, we can get it, but you know, it, it's got to be right now. I remember I was doing something completely different, involved in some work, getting something ready for uh, for the for the trailer at the time, and I just dropped, literally dropped everything I was doing. I said, I gotta go. <laughs> I, was like, I gotta go. I, you know, I saw this spot, and you know, even though it, it you know looks. Any, any restaurant might look a certain way to any person, but all I saw was the opportunity. And I said, this is chicken fire. I said, this is the first chicken fire. It doesn't get more perfect than this for us. And this is how we get, this is our, our gateway. This is our door, our bridge to the next level. And this is how we start to serve people even better on an even higher level and execute even more. So it was a no brainer for us that the opportunity was available. We didn't even give it a second, second or third thought. It was, this is it. This is right. We know it. Let's do this. It was meant to be. Yeah. And that Koi Town milk district area is really like up and coming with, you know, a bunch of different restaurants that are, are really like having a moment right now. So that's oh, got to be encouraging. 100%. This is a great area to be a part of the milk district, colonial town. And, and, in our area specifically, you know, we have, we're right here in the, with the Melt District, you know, Colonial Towns here as well. And then right behind us, you have Audubon Park, Baldwin Park, right to the right of us, you have Mills 50. So there, it's just a great central location to combine all these great food districts and food neighborhoods, like you said, that are up and coming and that are continuing to rise. And we're just glad to, you know, it's a blessing to be at the epicenter of all of it. Yeah. And so when are you guys opening? Because um, I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're talking about my taste buds and they're doing exactly what you're saying they're doing. And I haven't even tried your food. So, so when do you guys open? What work is kind of being done right now ahead of it? Yeah. So we got a lot of the interior work done right now. Right now we're doing our finishing touches on everything. As you can see, there's like a beautiful mural right behind me that yeah, we're able to- gorgeous, by the yeah. way. Whoever did that is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, we, so this is a, we actually, that's the graphic from the front of our trailer. And then our artist, Amy, who came and brought that to life on this wall. Absolutely amazing. Um, the, the whole space is transformed. It looks, you know, it, it's once, once you come in here, if you know, if you, if you look at Chicken Fire or anything on Instagram, Facebook, or if you've ever been to Chicken Fire, you step into this place, you're like, yeah, this is Chicken Fire now. So there's a few touch up things that we have to do. Our team is expanding a lot like a lot. <laughs> and uh, so we're getting everyone up to speed and learning how to do things the chicken fire way, which is, you know, different from how other places might do things. So we're getting everything up to speed. We're working on that. So our projected grand opening date right now is uh, Tuesday, December 15th. 
But currently, if you do want chicken pie and you're really hungry, you can uh, get us right now on Uber Eats. Uh, we're open through the rest of the Uber week on Uber Eats. Eats. Chicken pie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're open the rest of this week uh, and next week uh, all on Uber Eats. So we, we're, we're working fast. We're using that to help kind of speed along our uh, training and getting everyone up to speed and, and really just getting adjusted to this new space. I mean, because we've been working in less than 200 square feet for the past year. So now, you know, with a little out. less, yeah, <laughs> we got a little less than 1300 to work with now. So it's like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not constantly bumping elbows and everything. Is the, is the trailer going to stay open up and running or is that just going to be maybe a special event kind of thing? Yeah, we recently just kind of shared a story, a message on our Facebook and Instagram stories that our trailer is officially retired. It, yeah. <laughs> it has been good to us. We've appreciated it, but, uh, chicken fire and i mean this in the most humble way has become too big to fit into that small trailer and you know it's time it for, for everything that we put into which is a lot you know we do a lot of prep work everything before you get chicken fire there's 24 to 48 48 hours of work that has been put into anything that makes it to your plate or to your box and it's just too much for that trailer to handle and with this restaurant, we're anticipating to be really, really busy, and we don't want our focuses to be separated, so we're gonna put our all into making this as amazing as we can. All right, so my big question I always ask is, if you had to pick one meal that you said, Candace, you have to try this. What is it? What does it come with? What are the sides? What does your chicken come with? Yeah, 100% no doubt, if you can handle some heat, and I, and I mean a good amount of heat, Hot box medium all day long. Hot box medium is my personal favorite. That's going to come with two of our jumbo buttermilk fried chicken tenders. Mm. And we'll tell you, like, we're not skimping you on the tenders like some of the other places. Well, our tenders are, are all natural. One on the left. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our, tenders, our tenders are big. Our tenders are big, and they're all natural. We get them from a great place uh, farm out of North Carolina, and uh, they've been a consistent provider of us since we started. Our, it comes with two tenders. Our crinkle cut fries, mm. coleslaw, our creamy buttermilk coleslaw that we make from scratch, our house made sole sauce, which is a creamy mayo based sauce, which complements the chicken perfectly. All of our tenders we finish with a slight honey drizzle just to give it a little bit of an evolution with the flavor. It just combines everything all together really nicely and cuts into the heat a little bit. Uh, two kosher dill pickles go on top of each, um, on those tenders. Okay. You got Again. You've got some butter bread underneath it, and then you know the whole box just finishes together nicely. I mean, you're going to be full after it, but if you said that's the one thing you have to have, and you can take that heat in your mouth, hot box medium, no doubt. You can't take some heat, you know, get the hot box and soulful. It's fine. All right. Okay, I'm meek. I'm meek, but you know what? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Get the, get the meek. I, I always meek is like you know the the little brother that I constantly forget about. Yes, we do have meek in the family. <laughs> <laughs> So um, you're opening up in about two weeks. Yeah. Uh, you're doing your little soft opening that little soft opening, sorry. But you know, you're doing your soft opening now on yeah. uh, Uber Eats. Um, where, aside from Uber Eats, where can people find you online, social media, all that? Yeah, Instagram and Facebook at Eat Chicken Fire. And those are just the handles, not our actual name. We're just called Chicken Fire. But Instagram and Facebook at Eat Chicken Fire, E-A-T Chicken Fire. And you can find us on Google and Yelp for other information too, if you're just looking for like hours and things like that once we get started. But uh, Instagram and Facebook are what we're most active on, and TikTok as well. We're start we're we're uh, we're learning, and we're going to get on that as well. So eat chicken fire as well on TikTok, and technically we have Twitter too. But Facebook. I mean, and you guys, you gotta stay hip with these young. Yeah, you like gotta, <laughs> <laughs> There's always a new thing, and I thought I was pretty savvy, and then I figured out not so. So <laughs> I was just going to do it. Lip sync? What's this? <laughs> and people would somebody tell me, oh, I saw you on TikTok. You know, you got, you, you went viral on TikTok. I was like, I did? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. You got to do some, like, chicken fire dance or something like that. Was, people, yeah, like, we, discount or something like that to people who yeah. do chicken fire dance. So I'm thinking something there. <laughs> I got, yeah, we, we, we got to get hip. So, you know, got to get younger, as they say. So we'll, figure it, we'll figure it out. Yeah, well, you have a lot of followers. I mean, I was looking at your Instagram. You have over 10,000 followers on, on at least on, on Insta. So, I mean, you're doing a great job. You have so much traction here in the community. And I can tell why, because you guys care so much about the community. And, and Thank you. The way Central Florida and Orlando is, is, you know, you care for them, we care for you. So, oh, I mean, yeah. good luck with everything. I'm going to be there, no doubt. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Make sure you find me. 
<laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> Tom, do you have any other questions? No, no. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, you know, without giving too much away, I don't live far from your new location, so I will definitely oh, yeah. be stopping by in the very nice. Day. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm, I literally, everyone knows that I'm always at Chicken Fire. You know, some people might think I live here. I, I, I kind of do live here. <laughs> uh, and, and for the foreseeable future, I definitely will with this new endeavor we've got going on. So make sure you guys stop by. I'll be around. So I uh, can't wait to see you guys in person and uh, give me a fist bump. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate, appreciate you taking all that time. I know it's been a very busy day. The holidays, the openings, you name it. We appreciate you for taking the time with us. It's all onward and up here, Bert, from here. Uh, you know, we're looking forward to things. And also, you know, in the restaurant, we're going to have some pretty good, hefty COVID precautions in place. So we're super excited to have, welcome everybody in. Uh, thank you guys for making the time for me. You guys are the best. Really appreciate it. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you. Happy holidays. Okay, likewise. Thank you. Right, bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Florida Foodie. We'd also like to thank our guest, Chef Kwame Boache from Chicken Fire. You can find him and his restaurant on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Just search Eat Chicken Fire. You can also find Candace Campos on social media as well. She's on Twitter. Just search at Candace News 6. And on Facebook, search Candace Campos News 6. Also, a big thank you to our technical producers, Derek Mosier and Ryan Haley. I'm the show's producer, Thomas Mates. Florida Foodie is available to download wherever you get your podcasts. Please take the time to rate and review us there as well. And you can find videos of all of our podcasts at clickorlando.com slash podcasts.